This is NBD with Brian Williams, live from the battlefield here, World War II. And we are deep in the conflict. Uh, right now, we are doing a three-part series, a sniper special, elite snipers. What does it take to be an elite sniper? And who are they? Well, we're going to start off with the U.S. Army, it's a, one of their elite snipers. Uh, his name, Sergeant Billy Bob Shakers from Ken, the hills of uh, Kentucky. And then we'll also be entering in the second interview, uh, famous sniper Shaken Schnitzel, Sergeant Shaken Schnitzel from the German Army, the Axis. And then we'll wrap it up with an elite sniper from the Soviet Union, Sergeant Shekinatsky. Okay, so the right here in front of us, we got uh, Sergeant Billy Bob uh, Shakers. We cannot disclose our identity. As you can see, he he won't be looking at us. Uh, that's just to keep him safe on the battlefield. Uh, with over 10,000 confirmed kills, this guy is a legend from World War II and World War II. World War I and World War II. And so we thought we'd ask him some questions and, and then maybe even try to watch him go into battle and see it from his perspective. Um, uh, so, Sergeant Billy Bob Shakers, we want to thank you for this interview and spending time with us. Yeah, you betcha. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, you know, I, I'm just a sniper. I, I, that's all I am. Uh, well, how, how'd you get into becoming a sniper? I mean, what, what legends? How come? How'd you get so good? Well, well, it started at a young age back in the in the hills of Kentucky. Uh, you know, we were raised tough back there, and uh, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, most kids when they're when they're born, right? Uh, they, 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 their mama holds them, they breastfeed, you know, all that good stuff makes them feel all good and, and, and nice. Um, but, you know, I, I was raised in the backyard in a, a den with a bunch of uh, foxes. Uh, they, uh, from one to two, I lived in the den with the foxes. And I had to fight for, you know, the milk from the, from the foxes, uh, you know, the, the boobies and nipples. And, um, I had to really fight those other foxes for it. And I'm, I'm kind of scarred up a little bit right now. I got no teeth because of those fights and uh, malnutrition. Um, well, okay. That, that, wow, I, that's pretty extreme, don't you think? Well, it, yeah, well, we, that's why I'm so damn tough on the battlefield is, is that start. Okay, so what about shooting weapons? How would you get so good? Did you go to like a special school? Well, uh, not really. My school was the woods of Kentucky. Uh, and uh, I got my first rifle when I was three. Uh, when you were three, um, like a like a like a pop gun or something, or a potato gun or something. Uh, no, sir, a, th a thirty out six with a scope on it. Okay, come on now, a thirty out six with a. Uh, yeah, it was mounted to my buggy, my little baby buggy, my stroller, and they had that mounted just where I could look through the scope, and we'd go out, uh, you know, in the woods, and and I'd I'd shoot uh, the weapon at three. Um, at five uh, is when uh, I actually started hunting. I, I was able to walk at that point, and um, you know we would basically roll my rifle. They made up a little thing where I could roll it. It had some bipod legs, so I just get in position. They'd roll it up because uh, it was bigger than I was, you know, and I'd fire that weapon. And I, I took out my first mule deer at five. At seven, we started to hunt big game with my daddy, and I took down my first moose at seven. Um, at 10, uh, we went to Africa and we hunted big game there, lion and rhinos. And that's where I actually took down my first lion, uh, which is my K-bar. I had a K-bar as well as a youngster. Um, so, you know, I don't, I, you know that, that kind of prepared me for, for what I'm doing now, that tough upbringing and that hunting that we did. Well, what about school? I mean, did you go to, no, I, my school was the woods. I talked to the gopher. I talked to the turtle. Uh, I talked to Mr. Snake. You know, they taught me all my life, life lessons. I, it, you know, I went to the barn, and I, I saw the cows doing what they do in the sheep. And, I, and, you know, I learned about the birds and the bees. You know, they did their thing. I didn't have to ask my daddy. I, I just saw it happen. It was uh, pretty scary, actually. Um, okay. Uh, wow. This is this is more than I expected. So then how did you get in the military as a sniper? Well, it's a long uh, standing tradition in the Shakers, you know, that we were in the, the American Revolution. Uh, we were in, uh, you know, World War One. You know, I was in World War One. Uh, you know, we, we've been fighting. You know, we are we are tough sons of bitches. And um, we're all known for shooting. That's what we do. We're the shooters. And um, well, so when I was 15, I went in. Well, wait, 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 wait. 15. How'd you get in? 
Well, she had a lot of body hair. I bought a hair all over my body. I had a mustache and a goatee. And so, you know, they thought I was like already 30. <laughs> I was hardened a little bit, you know, from that thing with the foxes and stuff. So, um, yeah, it, it, I went in at 15 and basically I got in. Now, once they saw me shoot, that was it. I was uh, in, already getting trained to be a sniper. Whoa. So you ready? Like, could sh oh, yeah, I, I could shoot like uh you know a quarter off someone's head at like you know 500 meters okay so uh, how do you prepare for the battle i mean when you're going in i mean what what do you do different than the other snipers well i don't know if i want to share all my secrets um but i i do some unique things to prepare to go on the battlefield so take for instance this town right here right it's a french village here uh, they got some sewer water running down through there. And what I do is I come out and I roll around in this stuff. I get down in the sewer water. I get in the bushes. I might even eat some of them at French the, the, the crepes, whatever them damn things, the pancakes. I'll eat some French food if I'm fighting in a German area. I'll eat some of that uh, that bratwurst and uh, drink me come that German, uh, that, that beer. It's really thick beer. Um, so I, I immerse myself in the battlefield. So I become the shadow. I become, they don't even know I'm there. Wow, that is that's that's some amazing stuff. So, what about your weapon and like your tactics? Well, yeah, I, I got some of that too. Now, now, let's talk about my tactics first. Now, okay, when I get in position, okay, a lot of these newbie snipers they run around moving and all that. I don't do that. I get in position and I don't move. I will lay there for a whole match. I'll even lay there for two matches sometimes. And if I gotta go, you know, potty. I, or you know poo poo I, I do it right on the spot okay I just I let it go right there I don't move I am still unless I have to move I don't move see because the human eye is attracted it's attracted to movement and when I see movement I pop it okay that's how it is so I don't move period the other thing I do okay now this is if you're a kid watching this that's just, I I uh encourage you to turn down the mute turn it off just turn it off here because this is mature content this is war my friends so i i mean i'm just going to be honest with you there's a there's a tradition in the shakers that really helped us on the battlefield as a sniper you got to know windage you know direction all of that so what we do now again this is crude and i and i and i'm I, i'm telling you right now what i do is i go get in the bushes right i go get in the bushes i drop my pants all right drop my pants and I take my thumb and I shove it as far up my butthole as it'll go. I mean, deep. I mean, eyeball popping deep. Now, I do this with a dry thumb. Now, you got to use a dry thumb so you get full pain out of it. You got to feel violated. Your eyeballs have got to be popping out of your head. Now, this is going to raise your awareness on the battlefield. This could prepare you to enter combat as a sniper. If you were tired before this, you are not going to be tired once that happens, okay? All right. Like you see this guy in front of me, he don't even see me because I have blended in with the environment. Look at that. He doesn't even know I'm here because I have eaten the crepes from this town. Look, there he goes. Doesn't even smell me, nothing. All right, back to my thumb tactic. Okay, so you get this thumb, you're buried in there hard, okay, dry, so you feel the pain. And um, move it around if you got it. And then once, now you only do this once. You do it twice, that's another, that's an issue there. You pull it out and you want to hear a you would hear that popping sound, that like when you're bowling and your thumb swells up and it's stuck in that bowling ball. You want to pull it out and pop it. And now, if you don't hear that popping sound, that's another issue. Not, I'm not going to talk about that. Pop it on out. Now, when it comes out, you're going to have a little doo doo on there. That's, I mean, that's just, I know that sounds gross. You may even have a little blood on there if you've got them Paul Bunyan hands. Okay. You, you just might. And that's okay. You just leave it mixed up. Now what I do is I raise that thumb in the air. Now that thumb, because of this, this technique we use, not only can, see, does he know I'm over here? Not only do we sense the wind direction and the speed, okay? It can also sense the temperature, that's right, the temperature, and the humidity and the time of day. All that by using that technique, okay? And I know it sounds pretty crude, but it works. Trust me. That's why I'm an elite sniper with over 10,000 kills. The other thing I do is with my weapon. Whoa, 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 hold on. Well, let's go back. You're telling me you stick your finger up your anus. 
before you go into battle? Uh, no, 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 sir. I said, I said, I stick my finger up my butt. I don't know what a, uh, an anus is, but that's I don't sound right to me. I stick it up my butt. Okay, this is make sure we're clear. And yes, I do. It's a favorite thing, and we don't want to do it once. You don't do it. You do it twice. That's that's funny business. Okay, we don't do that. I'm talking one, and I do this to sacrifice myself for the war cause. Okay. All right. Now here's what I do with my rifle. Okay, this is critical. I take my rifle, and I, I you know, the butt of your rifle. I saw that thing down into a sharp wedge, okay, a wedge. And then I take that wedge, and I mean sharp. I take that wedge and I shove it into my shoulder where my man boobs are at and my man fat, my fat back. And it goes right in, it almost cut, it does cut me. It wedges into the fat and it locks in. Once it locks in, that stabilizes the rifle. Now, is it painful? Yes, but I want it to be painful because every time I shoot and that kicks back, it digs another quarter of an inch into my fat back and that keeps me alert on the battlefield now, i hope you're all getting this it's just not shooting a weapon here the the other thing i do is i don't shower for a couple weeks before i go on a mission and what i do is i i use my hands and i gather the fat back the grease from my man boobs my pits my blubber you know my butt cheeks i get it all lathered up and i apply that to my bolt to the bolt of my rifle, right? And I put all over, and it, and it greases it up, and it makes it smooth as butter, and that action in there, right? And I'll even drip some down into the barrel itself. You gotta get it down so it's all slickety smooth with fat back all over it. The other thing I'll do is I'll get some Jimmy Dean sausage from the mess hall, and I'll take the Jimmy Dean sausage, and I smear it a little bit onto my scope, okay? I know that sounds weird. You think, why is he smearing uh, Jimmy Dean sausage grease on the scope? Well, the reason I do that is when I'm in battle, okay, and I'm focused, I got the kick coming back, it's cutting into my man boobs, um, I, I can smell the Jimmy Dean sausage, see? I can smell it on the scope when I'm firing. And when I see all those Germans or those or those Russians running around, scurrying like ants, and me and me shooting them, and they and they're panicking, right? And I smell it, and what it does, it makes me want to take them out faster so I can get back to the mess hall and eat some Jimmy Dean sausage. See, I love that stuff, and so that's another tactic. It inspires me on the battlefield. Okay, and the last thing I do is I I will shoot a soldier right with these bullets I've got, and let me tell you about those bullets. The bullets I use are special bullets, okay? And I use a home remedy on my bullets. Now, again, if you are a child or weak of the stomach, don't turn this off now because it's about to get pretty funky. But again, this is war. And what I do is I will double triple up on rations the night before in the mess hall. And I will have like pork and beans, uh, you know, uh, ribs, whatever they're having. And I might even let it ferment for a little bit first. And I eat that up. I mean, I pack it in, right? Pack it in. I might even eat a block of cheese so that blocks me up for a good day or two. I'll let that ferment. And then you you know what's going to happen, right? When it, when it comes out, I save that. And I take my bullets and I coat them in that, what I made. And I know that sounds horrid. I, it sounds gross. Uh, but let me tell you something right now. Not that I ever wound the enemy, because normally I one shot, they're dead. But if I happen to nick one, right, um, that that soldier, okay, he will die a horrendous death about a week later. It takes about a week uh, for, for the, the bugs, you know, from what I used to really get through their body and, and kill them. It's a torture's death. I don't, I don't wish upon anybody, but, you know, if I do nick somebody, I expect them to die because uh, I'm an elite sniper. Uh, so that that's it. Holy cow, man! I, I, this is more than I can take in, and, and it's it's about the most repulsive things I have heard from a soldier on the battlefield. Well, I, 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 man, this is war. I didn't say it was gonna be, uh, you know, something all nice and that, but I gotta do what I gotta do to take out the enemy. Okay, and that's just how it is. Uh, I told you earlier. If you're a child, don't watch this, or you got a weak stomach. Okay. Okay, okay, I hear you, man. I hear you. Okay. Um, man, okay. Anything you want to ask the me before we go, um, Sergeant, uh, anything? Yeah, I, I got a question for you, man. Did, did you serve in the military, uh, Crying Williams? I'm wondering if you served. Well, uh, well um, yeah, yeah I, I did I, a little bit, yeah. Uh, well, well, you know where you at, man. 
Uh, I, uh, I was with the um, 83rd uh, Airborne. Um, 83rd Airborne? I never heard of the 80. I heard 82nd. Is the 83rd above the 82nd? Like a special forces thing? I, I, yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, I was with the 83rd. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. All right, man. I, I, I never heard of that, but it sounds sounds pretty tough. I'm sure you you got that um, PTDS stuff from that. I bet you saw some horrific stuff. Yeah, no, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. Let's get, hey, let's get back to you, okay? Okay, last question for you. I mean, how do you sleep at night? You've killed over 10,000 soldiers. How do you do it? You know, what? How, what? Don't, don't you have horrible... Nah, nah, man. Nah, let me tell you something. From my upbringing, it was tough. You know, the whole... I told you, living with the coyotes, the den. You know, it got harder from then on. And, and the other thing is, you know, um, I'm just doing my job. I'm just shooting, doing my job. It's nothing personal here. Um, and the other... I just usually go back. I, you know, I have me a, a good dinner, some pork and beans or something, uh, maybe a cold beer, cold Budweiser or something, Bud Light, and I uh, call it a day, and then I move on to the next mission. So, I, I, you know, I sleep like a baby, man. I sleep like a baby. I'm good to go. All right, well, you know, you guys heard it. This this, um, this, this elite sniper in front of us here, which we can, can, cannot show his identity, has told us all his secrets, um, and, you know, it must work for him. He's still alive, and he's got the highest, you know, kill rate in the u.s army snipers um this is crying william stay tuned for part two where we uh, talk to an elite german sniper uh sergeant uh Sagen schnitzel uh it ought to be interesting i'm not I, who knows what he's gonna say uh but again thank you and uh, again live from nbd this was crying williams stay tuned for our next broadcast hey, 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 thanks guys I, I, I gotta get into battle